Hello, I'm Korma and welcome. In this series, we're going to show you how to cook a wide variety of international vegetarian cuisine from over 30 countries. And in this edition, we're going to show you how to prepare the second in this series of three Indian feasts, including yellow rice, Rajasthani spicy dal stuffed bread, urad dal puri, and date and tamarind sauce. So let's begin. I thought we'd start the show by showing you how to prepare a wonderful, simple to prepare yellow basmati rice. Basmati rice is not a brand name, but a variety of fabulous long grain rice from India. Beautiful milk white grains that are four or five times as long as they're wide with little pointy ends, but it's also very aromatic. It's one of the world's most aromatic of rices. In fact, it's favored by all the world's chefs as being a number one quality rice. Actually, there's three varieties of basmati rice that are exported from India. Two of them are from India, actually, from Dehradun and from Patna. They're two very famous varieties. And there's one type of basmati rice that comes from Pakistan. Either way, this rice has been cultivated in the foothills of the Himalayas for thousands and thousands of years. And it's been cooked the same way all that time. I'm going to show you now how to make a very simple batch of basmati rice flavored with turmeric and a little salt. Let's have a look at our ingredients over here. We've got one cup of basmati rice, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, two tablespoons of ghee or clarified butter, two tablespoons of chopped fresh green coriander leaves, and over in our pot we have two cups of water which is coming to the boil. First thing we're going to do is to add our turmeric powder and our salt to our simmering rice. Let's add our salt and our turmeric powder. Give it a bit of a stir around. Now we're going to wait for our turmeric and salt and water to come to the boil. And then this is going to be added to our grains of rice, which we're going to roast up. Over here in my beautiful mortar and pestle, I have some fresh turmeric root. Well, it's actually dried turmeric root, but most people don't see turmeric in this form. I'll pull out a little piece and show you. See, it's a, this is a broken up piece of a large root, which I purchased from an Asian grocery shop. H whole turmeric root itself is actually very, very hard, like rock. I'll show you some. This is the uh, whole turmeric root here. It's quite an interesting looking root. It's actually um, the rhizome from the plant, which is known as curcuma longa. And the, the powdered turmeric over here is made by putting the whole turmeric roots, after they've been dried out, uh, in a big machine and grind into a very fine powder. And that yellow powder, turmeric, is, uh, as I said, very much used in Indian cuisine, not only for giving a very delightful yellow color, uh, it can be used internally by just simply eating food cooked with turmeric, or it can be applied on the skin if you have any skin problems, boils or problems like that. And it's actually one of the most effective uh, remedies for acne. In fact, if you eat food that contains turmeric, you won't ever have any problems like that. So it's actually very, very nice, not only for taste, but for one's health. So let's begin by roasting our rice over here while our water's coming to the boil. Let's turn on our flame here, like so. And let's add our little bit of ghee or butter to our pan. And as soon as the ghee melts, which should be in about a second or two, we add our rice. Don't forget, this rice has been washed and drained and allowed to air dry. Now we need to saute it for a few minutes. Sauteing is very important. This makes sure that all those individual grains of rice that you're cooking will end up fluffy. Of course, you already have an advantage and that is that you're using basmati rice. I've rarely seen a batch of basmati rice ruined. I've even seen cooks that know nothing about cooking rice come up with a perfect result. Basmati uh, rice actually uh, ensures uh, a fluffy result and sauteing it makes it even better. So we're sauteing, sauteing our rice grains now uh, until they go a whitish color and I like to do that simultaneously uh, to the pot of water coming to the boil. Another secret of cooking a good batch of rice and uh, I've had experience cooking like a hundred cups of rice at a time and you have to be really sure you know what you're doing is to make sure that the water is boiling uh, at the same time as you add it to the roasted rice. So even if the rice is simmering a little bit, just before you add the water to the rice, bring it to a full boil. So that's what we're doing now. I brought it to a full boil. Mm -hmm. 
Now let's give it a stir. Make sure there's no grains of rice stuck on the side of the pan here. First thing that happens, it comes to a rapid boil because that water was already boiling and the rice grains are very hot. Let's now turn it down to a simmer. Simmer means the bubbles are just breaking the surface. See that? Okay, let's pop our lid on now. Keep all that steam in there to plump up those grains of rice. We're going to come back in about 20 minutes. Some cooks prefer to cook their rice for 15 minutes, then turn off the flame and allow it to steam on its own. Or you can cook it for a full 20 minutes, but uh, an extra five minutes or two with a lid on afterwards is fine. Let's have a close look here. All those individual grains, look at those fluffy grains of rice. Every one plump and juicy. If you're not sure, have a squeeze of that grain. See how it's completely soft? Let's add our fresh coriander leaves. That adds a beautiful color and fragrance. And there it is. Hot, steaming, yellow basmati rice. Just cleaning up here for our next recipe. I'd like to tell you about it. It's a Rajasthani spicy dal stuffed bread. Beautiful puffy breads filled up with spicy lentils. They're commonly known as Ur Dal Kachuris or sometimes Ur Dal Puris. As the name suggests, they come from Rajasthan in northern India. And they're also very popular in UP, Uttar Pradesh, where you'll find them sold on roadside, uh, little carts as snacks, sometimes with little dishes of chutney, sliced cucumbers, all sorts of condiments, very, very rustic sort of dish. And you see people eating them out of little, uh, what do you call them, little banana cups with chutney. And it's a quite a wonderful ethnic uh, sort of festival when you see these things being eaten. Uh, they're also served, of course, in homes and restaurants and temples and everywhere. Very, very famous savory. Um, they mainly uh, consist of utter flour, which is the pastry, and on the inside there's a spicy lentil filling called urad dal. Let me show you the urad dal over here. This is whole urad dal lentils. They look almost like black versions of whole mung beans. And over here is the split version. These are the whole black pods that have been decorticated. In other words, the skins have been removed and the inside has been split. This urad dal is very, very popular in Indian cooking. It makes up a, a bulk of many, many different types of preparations. And these urdal lentils, when soaked, form the main ingredient in the filling for these urdal kachoris. The pastry is made mainly of utter flour over here. This is the whole wheat which is ground very finely into a fine, fine flour. And it makes a very wonderful pastry flour. Let's have a close look at our ingredients here. We've got some water to make up the pastry. We've got exactly two cups of sifted utter flour. Over here we have some urdal lentils. There's one cup of urdal which was soaked in cold water for about four hours and then almost all drained, although there's a little bit of water left in there. We're going to use that when we grind up the beans. And then over here we have half of a cup of warmed ghee or clarified butter, three teaspoons of salt, a tablespoon of whole coriander seeds, a tablespoon of those lovely anise-flavoured fennel seeds, a tablespoon of cumin seeds, eight whole black peppercorns, and four large dried red chilies. So you can see there, there's a trend in these spices. They're all whole. We're going to dry roast them to extract their aromatic flavor, and then we're going to grind them up to a powder. This gives the filling inside these breads a very, very warm, rich flavor, which is essential for kachoris. Um, I think the first thing we should do is get our urdal lentils, put them in our food presser, pro processor, and grind them up to a puree. Let's do that right away. I've left a little water in the uh, bird dial, like I mentioned, because we have to uh, use a little water in order to allow them all to, to, to grind up. Otherwise, if they were all dry, it would be a lot harder. If necessary, if you're having some difficulties grinding them up, you can add a little water. Of course, in India, the Indian housewives, they don't use uh, fancy machines like this unless they happen to be living in the city. But your average uh, Rajasthani housewife would simply use a big stone mortar with a big piece of rock on top and grind the dal up. Actually, it's uh, very tasty like that. So the dal lentils are in there. Let's turn on our machine. Noisy little fellow it is too.
There we go. Pureed. So let's extract our Erdal from our blender into our bowl. That was pretty painless. Take our bowl over here. Next thing we're going to do is dry roast our spices. So let's pop them in our frying pan over here, shall we? First of all, we're going to turn on our flame, like so, and put all our chilies, our peppercorns, our cumin seeds, our fennel seeds, our coriander seeds, that's all, into our frying pan. And we're gently going to roast them with a wooden spoon here for however long it takes until they start going a golden colour. And the most important thing for you to tell whether they're roasted enough or not is the aroma. They'll start giving off a very, very wonderful aroma. A combination of chilli, fennel, coriander, black pepper, of course. Okay, our spices are roasted. Let's take them over to the spice grinder here. Our coffee grinder, which is being used as a spice grinder. Take out our chilies because they need to be put in afterwards. Quite hot too. Ouch. And into the spice grinder. There are the spices. Let's break those chilies in half. Otherwise they won't fit. Ooh. Amazing aroma coming from these chilies when you break them open. Takes your breath away. Let's grind them up. Ooh, look at that. Wonderful. Out they come. A nice bowl of dry roasted spices ground to perfection. Let's take them over here and pop them down. Next thing we're going to do is saute our Urdal puree in our wok and we're going to add our spice powder and we have our filling ready to go. Let's start by putting in some ghee. Put a teaspoon of ghee in our wok. Let's heat it up. Pop in our Urdal. It's actually not a mistake, it should stick. It actually increases the flavour. Once again, there's another wonderful flavour coming out of the wok here. Sautéed Erdale has a really wonderful, uh, hard to describe, a, a sort of a herbal flavour. Our Erdale filling is starting to stick now, as you can see. That's actually excellent. This gives it a wonderful flavour, an unparalleled flavour which can't be duplicated if you don't let it stick. So allow it to stick, even spread it out a little bit, like so, so it sticks more. Oops, keep it inside the wok if you can. Now let's add a teaspoon of salt. Our ground spices. Fold in all our spices. Let's take our filling out now and put it on our plate to cool down. Let me clear some things out of the way here. This is uh, important that our filling is cool, otherwise um, it's a bit hard to seal the kachoris. So I think it's time to make our pastry now. Let's bring our big pastry bowl over here and, uh, well, let's put our filling where the pastry was. Now let's put our utter flour in our big bowl here. Into that we're going to put the rest of our clarified butter, our ghee, and some salt. Let's rub this together like this so we can form a coarse meal-like consistency, almost like breadcrumbs. Okay, let's add some water to that now. Just a slurp. Now 
A little at a time is best. Don't add all your water at once, otherwise you might end up with a, a soup instead of a pastry. A good dough, you should be able to gather all the little morsels of flour together in one big lump and practically speaking clean the whole bowl out with that big lump of dough like this. Okay, let's put our bowl aside, wipe down our bench a little bit here, put our dough down. Now let's knead. This is an important part of pastry making. Using the heel of your palm, pushing all your energy down, putting all your weight behind it. If you have lots of weight, like myself, then that's all the better. You should knead your dough now for about eight minutes. Um, I'm going to put this aside and show you a batch of dough that I made previously, wrapped up in some plastic wrap here. This was needed for about 10 minutes actually, I had a bit of spare time before, so I needed up a batch of dough and here it is. Um, I've got another cutting board down here, it's, uh, or should we say a rolling board in this case. Put our dough on here, let's roll it out into a long snake-like object. And we're going, to, we're going to cut it up into little patties. Just about ready. Okay, let's take our knife, cut it in half. Catch, let's cut each of our halves in half. And cut, cut each of these pieces into five. So that's 20 kachoris. Put the batch aside, take one piece of dough like so, press it into a little patty. Roll the patty into a two inch disc like so. Put that aside. Let's reach over and get our filling and one teaspoon teaspoon a nice spoon of filling into the center of your kachori like so and fold it in to make a little parcel just like this now we turn over our little parcel press down with the palm of our hands and very very gently roll 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 our rolling pin. This is an Indian style rolling pin by the way which is just perfect for making kachuris. Roll until it's very very thin. The thinner the better without puncturing the pastry. This has to be done with some care and some experience but it takes a little time. It takes a little time to roll these out but it's well worth it. These are very very traditional savouries. So there's one kachuri. I'll put him aside. So I'm going to fry these now in our vessel of ghee. Let's take our tray full of kachoris over close by. We have a colander with something sitting underneath it. We have something to lift them all out with if we're doing more than one at a time. We have a slotted spoon. That's all we require. So let's very carefully take one and place it in the ghee. One, two, number three. Let's hold them under now and see what happens. Here they come, floating to the surface, all together actually. Now they're floating around and gradually, gradually going a golden brown colour. Okay, these kachoris are done. Onto our paper towel. 
like so. That's a very nice looking batch. Have a look at those. Well, here's our last batch of golden kachoris. They're ready to come out. And we're going to now pop them on our plate with a beautiful batch of chutney. Now, I think the most suitable combination is kachoris and date and tamarind chutney. This is one of my favorite combinations. I'm going to show you how to make date and tamarind chutney, by the way, later on in this show. It's a delicious combination of fresh dates and tamarind with a delightful sour, hot, and sweet flavor. That's the best thing, I think, with a nice batch of hot kachoris. Rajasthani dal stuffed breads, or dal kachoris, with date and tamarind chutney. Be my guest. I'm going to show you now how to make that lovely date and tamarind sauce that we served previously with the kachoris. It's a very lovely, sweet, sour flavoured sauce made primarily of tamarind and dates. I've got here a few of the lovely ingredients that we're going to use for our chutney. This is tamarind. I've got three types here to show you. This is the original form of tamarind. It's a very sour fruit which grows in tropical countries. This is the pod, and inside we have that lovely sour fruit. Inside the fruit there's more seeds. And when it's refined somewhat and the skins are taken off, you can purchase tamarind like this in blocks. You can also purchase tamarind like this in its concentrated extracted form. Either way, it's used for a variety of sour dishes in Indian cuisine. It's actually very popular throughout India and also in parts of Asia. Let's have a close look at the exact ingredients here for this batch of date and tamarind sauce. We've got three tablespoons of that dark tamarind concentrate. This is actually the instant tamarind out of a jar which you can buy at any Asian grocery shops. It makes it very easy to make this sauce in an instant, practically speaking. We've got two green chilies that have been seeded and minced. They're medium hot. We've got one and a quarter cups of boiling water which is on the stove, half a cup of chopped dried dates, one teaspoon of minced ginger, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of garam masala, which is another type of combination of spices, half a teaspoon of that chat masala, and two teaspoons of salt. What I'm going to do now is to put all of this in a food processor. This is actually a very, very simple to prepare chutney, as you'll see. It's sort of a cross between a chutney and a sauce, actually. Let's put our dates in here. In India, this will be done in a big stone mortar. But of course, we have our food processor, which makes life a little easier. In goes our green chilies. There's a special flavour that green chilies have, which can't be duplicated with the powdered stuff, powdered chilies. Fresh green chilies have not only a hotness, but a beautiful fresh flavour also. The salt, chat masala, gram masala, and of course, our tamarind concentrate. There we go. One big lump of tamarind concentrate. And our one and a quarter cups of water, which has just come to the boil. That's going to juice it all up a bit. Let's put on our lid, the machine here. Give it a blast. quite painless. What we're going to do now is to take it out of our food processor. I can tell you this really smells wonderful. Put it in our pot. This is the pot that we had the water boiling in. We're going to turn on the flame. I'm going to proceed to cook this down a little bit until it becomes a little jam-like in consistency. Will our chutney now 
has reached its completion stage, it's jam-like. It's actually, as I said, in between a chutney and a sauce. So I'm going to place it in my bowl here. I'm going to put this uh, in a cool place now, preferably the fridge, uh, for about four or five hours or even overnight. And this allows all the flavours to mingle and of course the sauce to cool down. I do have a batch that I have in the fridge already that I made last night. I'll grab it for you. Looks a lot smaller, huh? Well, I must apologise for this, but some of my friends came around last night and ate three quarters of it. It's that good, I can tell you. Date and tamarind sauce, for all your savouries, a fabulous condiment. Well, that's it for this edition of Cooking with Korma. I do hope you'll enjoy preparing these dishes as much as I've enjoyed sharing them with you. Happy and healthy eating. Thank you.